the final film we'll be reviewing is uh, By the Grace of God, and Jim Jim saw this and will review it for us. Yep, so By the Grace of God is coming out on October 25th. It's playing at a couple of film festivals besides that before then, uh, directed by Francois Ozon, and basically it follows the story. It's a real story, um, which has been going on even until quite recently about um, child abuse in the Catholic Church. In particular, it's following this tale of uh, one uh, priest, Bernard Prenat, um, who I think it was in Lyon, and basically the cover-up which, or the lack of resolution and dealing with his uh, crimes by Cardinal Barbaran in that sort of like period, I think it was kind of like late 80s, early 90s, and basically what follows is primarily uh, three or four men who were victims of this abuse. And the film opens with uh, Alexander, who is basically, he seems to have worked past these issues, but he finds out that the priest in question is back in the local diocese and is working with children once again after basically he, he's been assured that he would not. And the opening of the film is basically his correspondence and dealing with the local the local clergy and the local kind of administrators of the the church, the Catholic Church, about getting him reassigned or, you know, expose this. And he's a very devout Catholic. And it starts off with that correspondence. It then shifts to a second character, Francois, who's played by uh, Denis Menoshe. And basically, he is a completely different character, right? He's a far more combative character. He is an atheist. And basically, his um, parents know about this abuse that happened. And again, he's tried to, to move past it. And basically, their, their attempts to get this dealt with long after the fact kind of coalesce. And they form this um, association to try and get the Catholic Church to deal with this, to get... Uh, Prenat to no longer work with children and even to get him defrocked and basically try and get them to actually address this. And it's a very interesting film, mainly because of the difference in the characters that take this on. Um, the film that actually brings the most to mind is actually Spotlight. Um, so, you know, the Oscar winner that dealt with the, the journalistic aspect of similar things happening in uh, New England. And interestingly, I think Francois Ozon actually considered making this a documentary because around about the time this was released, the priest in question was actually on trial, or rather the cardinal was, for his kind of mistreatment of the whole thing. So th there is a certain amount of way that story has moved on since the film premiered at uh, Berlin. And it's, it's interesting he conceived it as a documentary, and then he said, I think, once he started talking to the, survi cause the survivors, because all these characters are based on real characters, once he started talking to them, they were imagining a film more in the vein of Spotlight. So it, it's very obvious where that sort of inspiration has come from. And it's a slightly odd film for us to imagine Francois Ozon making to a certain extent, but you can see where that came from. What's very interesting about the film, where it differs from Spotlight, is really in those characters because it's very it's far more saturated in the attitudes of the catholic church um you know where spotlight was also looking at from a far more journalistic perspective but it's really dealing with the, this very particularly catholic mix of issues that this brings up um you know there's a lot of guilt on the part of both perpetrators and survivors. There's how the survivors try to work through that in the context of, in the case of Alexander, his continuing faith, he's still a very devout Catholic, so he doesn't want to, you know, disown and shame the church in the same way that the Francois character does, where he's a very strong atheist and is very much okay with going for the jugular of the church itself. And the way that these survivors of the same or very similar abuse trying to deal with this in different ways. And I think the way that that is dealt with in the film is extremely well done. I think it's a very well-made film as well. You know, there's a lot of kind of very dark interiors, you know, where basically, you know, there's almost literally this cloud over the characters. And then as they start to try and move through that, that advances. So I think it, it's a very interesting film. I think it's far more rooted in Catholic thought and kind of the church around this rather than necessarily the horrors of the abuse itself. I mean, there's a lot of very difficult discussions happening in the film, 
but i think the way it deals with these questions of how people work through it when they still have faith but that faith has been tarnished by the institution that's supposedly the protector of it is a very interesting thing and i think it's a very powerful film to watch and it has a lot going for it in that respect i was gonna ask how does it compare with ozan's other films particularly like i you know i guess france as well um which i think was his last film dealt with kind of history as well mm -hmm. and, and things re-emerging from the past it's a far more restrained film um you know and some of that comes from the material but also d just in the way it's just in the way it's shot like i said there's a lot of dark interiors there's a lot of focusing on you know people's expressions and it, 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 it's not a film with a lot of flourishes right it's very much more rooted in the performances and i think again this is another film much like the other ones we've spoken about today that is extremely well cast um you know so the, the way that those characters play off each other is also very based in the the physicality of the characters right so melville popon my french pronunciation is absolutely terrible but the 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 actor who plays alexander he's this very kind of like thin clean cut you know besuited individual right it's very buttoned up and clearly he is and, and he's the one who is a devout catholic who's trying to deal with it all internally and then you contrast that with uh, francois who's this you know slightly unshaven more kind of boisterous and combative individual and again, the casting of Denny Menoshe on that is extremely good. So, like, basically, I think it's far more rooted in character and performance, perhaps. Uh, there's less flourish than you might expect. But overall, it is a very good film. It's a very powerful film. It's quite long, to be honest, but one thing it does very well is it blends the different stories quite well. They're quite segmented, but they all feel part of the whole because it starts with Alexander, it moves to Francois... Uh, who's kind of working with another another victim called uh, Gilles. And then the most powerful segment from somebody who's not moved on is another character called Emmanuel. And it blends those three segments very well, when it could be quite easy for them to feel disjointed, but it manages to do that extremely well, I think. So that's coming out on October 25th. Uh, if anybody finds themselves in Cambridge, it's screening at the Cambridge Film Festival. Uh, and I think it is Curzon that are distributing it in the UK, so no doubt you can probably get it on demand as well. But I would certainly say check it out, especially if you liked Spotlight. I think it would make a very good double bill with that. Wonderful.